Hello and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. With the price of gas in California currently, we recently sold our truck after realizing we were paying insurance and registration on it and hadn't actually driven it in over a year and Carvana decided to offer us what I believe was way too much money for it. This is its new replacement, a 6x10 aluminum utility trailer, which is easily towable by our bolt, but uh, we need to make a few modifications to it before it can do everything we wanted. So uh, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is install this 2,500 pound ATV winch from Harbor Freight. The weight capacity of the trailer itself is only 2,300 pounds, so that should be more than we ever need. My plan is to make it removable by uh, using a mounting plate to make it fit into this receiver tube here, which I will mount on the tongue of the trailer. I'm gonna use some C-channel to mount it over the beam right here, and I'll space it up a little bit so it doesn't interfere with this railing here. Now my local metal supply place didn't have any three inch C-channel in their scrap pile. They did have this piece of square tubing here, so let's make our own. After welding on a metal bar is a spacer. They fit over the tongue perfectly and I could attach the posts and receiver. The winch itself will mount to this adapter. Before attaching the receiver and making things too awkward to work with, I drilled some bolt holes to mount it to the tongue. I could then remove the paint. before welding on the receiver. And bolting it into place. The winch and fairlead will both bolt to this mounting plate, also from Harbor Freight, which in turn will mount to this hitch adapter, which just happens to be the cheapest thing I could find that would fit in my receiver. I started by cutting off the actual adapter portion. And weld it on the mounting plate. With the plate inserted into the receiver, I could install the winch. Since this trailer does have stake pockets, I built side rails using the metal equivalent of a 2x4 and smaller tubing around the top.
Since the posts were slightly smaller than the pockets, I added spacers so they would fit tight. and reinforcements where I would be bolting them to the trailer. After some paint, I bolted them in place. and weld it on the top bar. If you don't have a good spot for a ground clamp, add your own. After attaching one corner of the front bar, I used a ratchet strap to line up the other side. I'd like to take this moment to remind you that JK Feather Ranch is not a welding channel. It's a grinding channel. Hello, welcome back. For you, it's probably only been a quick scene change, but for me, a couple of weeks have passed. I got busy and I had to wait for some paint to dry, but after applying a few coats of the old Rust-Oleum, you'd never even know I don't know how to weld. Now, even though I'm not doing any more welding and it is hot today, you might notice I am back outside. Uh, that's because I did pick up a little project that's taking up all my garage space right now. So uh, if you want to see more of that in the future, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. Now today I'm going to go ahead and install a battery, try to get this winch powered, and get everything finished. Since it's just a small winch, all I should need is this motorcycle battery, which fits in this ammo box from Harbor Freight. I first cut a hole for ventilation, and showing things out of order, installed a grill. To get power from the battery to the outside of the box, I'll be using this Anderson connector and this waterproof trailer adapter. The connectors came with terminals that I crimped onto the end of some 10 gauge wire. and some rubber caps that I installed with the help of a screwdriver, electrical tape, and soapy water. The wires then click into place in the connector. There's a little locking tab that engages with the springy metal piece inside. I could then install the plug into the adapter. And mount the adapter in the box.
after securing the bottom of the box. I attached the top with threaded rod, which doubled as a battery hold down. Now to hook up the winch, they've given me this control box. These ends go to the motor. This is where I hook up the remote control and this end goes to the battery. It does have an inline circuit breaker, so that's nice. Uh, the only thing is I wish this had been bolted to here somehow, like with the bigger models, because now when I'm actually using the winch, I have to figure out somewhere to put this. I don't want to permanently mount it because that defeats the purpose of having a removable winch. Back in the present, I connected the positive and negative power wires. And with a matching Anderson connector on the other end, gave things a quick test. Now the trailer came with this four pin connector, pretty standard, but because I'm installing a battery, I'm going to upgrade it to a seven pin. Uh, personally, I don't like using the four pin connectors anyways, even without a battery. They uh, don't maintain good connection to the car, and I don't know if you can see or not, but I haven't even used this trailer yet, and this one's already pretty corroded. So uh, to install the seven pin, I bought this kit from Amazon. It includes the seven pin, like eight feet of cable, and even gives me this junction box to make all the connections and keep them out of the weather. I went ahead and mounted the box to the tongue and secured both cables for strain relief. After definitely measuring twice and not just eyeballing things, I ran the original wires into the box and extended them to reach the terminals. Then it was a simple matter of matching up the wires and tightening down the nuts. For some reason, the four and seven pin connectors use different color wires for the same function, so it's not quite as simple as just hooking the same colors together. If you need the information for your own project, go ahead and pause the video here. To connect to the battery, I'm using this 10 gauge landscape lighting cable, mostly because I already had some on hand. Although it technically doesn't matter, normally the side with the ridges is the negative and goes to the white wire, and the smooth side is positive and goes to black. And I'm done with everything in here. All that remained was to run the wire into the box through one of these UF connectors. and connect to the battery. Ridges to negative, smooth to positive. Over the next few weeks, I made a few more small changes, such as closing up the open ends of the tubing, adding some diamond plate to the ramp, and an inlet for a battery tender. And that is everything I wanted to get done for now. I do plan to do a couple of additional modifications later, such as some expanded metal sides and some stabilizer jacks on the back so if it's not connected to anything and I try to unload it, it doesn't go like this. But for now, let's go ahead and give this thing a test and see how it holds up to the thing we plan to use it for the most, which is a trip to our local brewery to pick up some grains for our chickens. And for those of you who want to know how the bolt performs, I'll have some efficiency numbers for you when we get back. Pro tip, welding a nut to your receiver and tightening a bolt does a lot to stop rattling.
Bon Appetit. If your chicken smells like death. We are back and everything is unloaded. The trailer and the winch worked exactly as I expected them to. No complaints there. And for those of you who wanted to see efficiency numbers, they'll be right here. So even with California's inflated electricity prices, this entire trip with the Bolt cost us about that much. Previously with our truck, assuming a generous 15 miles per gallon with the trailer and California gas prices of about $5 a gallon, it would have cost us that much. And there's also the added bonus of not having to take time out of our day to make a trip to the gas station to fill up a vehicle we barely use. So if you found this video helpful, informative, or just plain entertaining for some reason, feel free to hit that like button right down there and leave a comment for us. And as always, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one, including that Firebird in the garage.